Number 25 tells us to draw a graph. And we need to answer some questions about this. First of all, here's G of X. Does it potentially violate some math rules if we use certain values of X? Yes, it does. Anything that would make X minus 3 equal 0 would mean that we can't include that in the domain because that would make us dividing 1 by 0 and that can't happen. So the domain, other than that, the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, but it has to jump over 3. So it goes from negative infinity up to, but not including, 3. So we use parentheses and two separate intervals to show that the domain is negative infinity up to but not including 3 and then anything bigger than 3 to infinity. We write that negative infinity common 3 and then the union? Yeah, you can also write it as the union. The book uses the, the union. And actually the word for the union, I, I always use... you marked it wrong. No, I wouldn't mark it wrong, and I wouldn't mark it wrong if you said that this was or, because technically the right word to substitute for the union is going to be or. Okay, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the asymptotes. We'll worry about this after we've graphed it. Vertical asymptote. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Horizontal asymptote, we need to get our formula sheet. And I did give you on the formula sheet the method for finding out what horizontal asymptotes were if there are any. So what we do is we look at G of X and take into account that the numerator is a constant. Okay? This is the same thing as saying this is 1 times x to the 0 power. And what we're doing is we're comparing the degree of x in the denominator to the degree of x in the numerator. Now the reason that this is 1 times x to the 0 power is because x to the 0 power is just 1, which means we don't normally write down the x. So that means this is a degree 0 because it's constant, and this is degree 1. So that means that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And that leads us to the conclusion that the x-axis, which is y equals 0, is the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now you could actually sketch a graph with no more information than that. I'm going to go ahead and sketch it and then we'll verify it on the calculator. So here's my x axis. There's my g of x axis. And I'm going to mark these off in increments of 1. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
You don't have to label every single mark on the axis, just enough so that I can tell how you were going about it. Your horizontal asymptote is your y-axis. I'm sorry, your x-axis, because that's where y is equal to zero. Avoid this. It's going to avoid it. That goes on and says your vertical asymptote is x equals 3. So we draw a vertical line. And x equals 3. And you make it down. You don't make it solid. And then what's going to happen is when x is 1, then this will be 1 over negative 2. So it would be negative 1 half. And when x is 2, it's 1 over 2 minus 3, which is 1 over negative 1 or negative 1. And of course it can't be 3. So what it does is as you go back to zero, if x is zero, that's negative one third. And from that, you can tell what's happening. It's coming really, really close to the y-axis until it gets here. Can we just look on like the table and when you see? Yeah, you can do that too. That's what you're... Yeah, the calculator will help you out with that. Well, we have and we're going to graph it anyway, so we may as well put it in on y equals. So that's going to be 1 divided by the quantity. That's my story. You do have the bottom in parentheses. Yeah. Because it's just one number, so we don't need parentheses on the rest. And then we'll go to the table. And of course, we don't need any of the numbers that are already there. We need some smaller numbers. So let's go from like maybe negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And of course, when I hit 3, it says error because it's not defined. So that can give you the general idea of what's happening on this side. And then we can do the same thing, try and go to the other side. We know we can't use 3, but we could use 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what you see happening is that 4 is equal to 1. At 5, it's only a half. At six, it's down to a third. And at seven, it's down to a quarter. So it's doing the same kind of thing here. It's trying to get really close to this line, but it can't actually touch it. So there's the rest of your graph. And then you can check it on your calculator. I'm just going to set my window to go up from negative 5 to 5. Because that's the only part we're looking at here. Now, this line is not part of your graph. That's where it's actually trying to connect up the two endpoints. Okay. Is the horizontal asymptote part of it, though? Excuse me? Why is the horizontal asymptote not dashed also? Uh, well, that's the reason I marked it with a marker, because it was already an axis. So you don't have to dash that one? You don't have to dash that one. Just, you just have to dash the vertical? Yeah. 
because if it's the y-axis, you can't dash the axis itself. I mean, that's it's not really part so of the graph either. What if the horizontal asymptote was negative one? We would dash that. Then? Yes. Yes. If it's not the y-axis, then you can dash that. Okay. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay. Keep going. Got another graph. Oh, wait, I forgot to answer a question. Let me go back just a second. I just realized. So looking at the graph, it says, does it have x-intercepts and y-intercepts? What do you think? <coughs> now, there aren't any, so you write none. Because it doesn't have any x-intercepts. It doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere. It doesn't have any y Well, actually, it does have a y-intercept. I'm sorry, I spoke too quickly. It does, does have one where x is equal to zero. And when x was equal to zero, then the value was negative one third. But if there's not an intercept, you just write the word none. Please do not write zero, because that doesn't tell me that you knew it was none. Zero is not necessarily none. Zero is a value. Y intercept was zero, negative one third. Okay, this one we have another rational function. So again, we're going to have to worry about having a zero in the denominator. means we need to worry about where 4x squared minus 4x minus 3 is going to be equal to 0. Now you can solve that by factoring or quadratic equation. Or you can graph just the denominator and find its zeros. like the uh, zeros are not going to be real numbers, or not going to be even numbers. Not, they're all real, they're just not even. So at negative one half, that you're going to have vertical asymptotes through x equals negative one half or negative 0.5 and x equals 1.5. So your x intercepts are your vertical asymptotes? Yes. Because this is where we set it equal to zero. Now you could have done this. This is a this is B and this is C, so you could have done it using the quadratic formula. X equals the opposite of 4, is, of negative 4 is 4, plus or minus the square root of 4, negative 4, sorry, squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 3. 
all divided by 2 times 4, but she would have still gotten those answers. You didn't have to do it by graphing. You could have used your quadratic formula. And your quadratic formula is on your formula sheet right here. So either method is fine. So this tells us we have two restricted values in the domain. So the domain is going to go from negative infinity to negative 0 0.5 and then skip over negative 0.5 and keep going until it gets to 1.5 and then it's going to skip over 1.5 and go to positive infinity. So there's your domain. Your y-intercept is always going to be where x is equal to zero. And if you let x be zero, 5x disappears, we have negative two. Four times zero squared minus four times zero is zero minus three. And that gets you your y-intercept. You just plug in x equals zero. And then we have to figure out, is there a horizontal asymptote? And, and there probably is, so the question is, what is it? Okay? So what we do is we go back to the function. And we look at n and m. n comes from 5x to the first minus 2. So n is equal to 1. m comes from... 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. So n is equal to 2. n is less than m. So again, going back to your asymptotes, n is less than m. y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to graph it, but we're going to graph it and find the x-intercepts by graphing rather than trying to solve algebraically, although you can. Hmm? Yeah. So we're going to graph this whole function. So the numerator of the function was 5x minus 2. going to be divided by the 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. And I'm going to hit the zoom button and go to the standard window. Now remember, those are asymptotes. That vert, those two vertical lines do not belong to the graph. So what it's going to do is it's trying to avoid negative one-half right here, and it's trying to avoid positive 1.5 here. It does have a y-intercept, which we found, and it will be perfectly fine since it's negative 2 over negative 3 to say that's 2 thirds, because it is. But it doesn't cross the x-axis, or does not appear to. Now, to be sure, what we're going to do is I'm going to trace a 
Okay, and notice that it did cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay, they can cross the horizontal asymptote, but they can't cross the vertical asymptote. It is possible to cross the horizontal asymptote. So here's what our graph looks like. down in that middle part, crosses it two-thirds, and then goes back up. And then on the other side, it comes in this way. I think that's wrong because in the 5x minus uh, two, uh, uh, two yeah, two. I have to twenty. I just saw that. Thank you. Yeah, and that changes the whole graph. I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to go to Zoom 4 for the decimal. And you can see on there, too, what it actually looks like. So what it's, where it's trying to avoid, it's got this asymptote here that is not part of the graph. It's got another one here. which is not part of the graph. And it goes that way, and it comes from up top. It goes that way. And then it comes from up top again. goes that way. So this one in fact did not cross its horizontal asymptote, although it is possible. I want you to remember that. It is possible for some graphs to cross their horizontal asymptotes, not their vertical ones, but their horizontal ones they can cross. Okay? So 
park in place. It doesn't have to be perfect if you want to get that on the edge. No. It has to be legible. Put it that way. I have to be able to read it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we have number 23. This is a quartic equation, it's a fourth power equation. It will have x intercepts, it will have a y intercept, it will have a relative minimum or maximum, not both in this case, because that's an even power function, and the coefficient of the first term is positive, so its arms are going to go up like a parabola. That may be flatter along the bottom, or it may make three terms. We don't know. So we're going to graph it. nowhere near big enough, so I'm going to go and increase down the negative part pretty far and graph again. Okay, still not quite far enough. There I'm seeing all the things that that, cal that that graph actually does. Now, my x-axis is not scaled the same as y. It doesn't have to be. So if you're going to sketch that graph, be sure that you indicate on the graph how you scaled everything. My graph is only going from negative 5 to 5. On the x-axis. But my y is going from 5 to 25, so let's see, 10, One is actually far enough because we can see the bottom of it at that point. So what we see happening, first of all, we know that it has a y-intercept at negative 8, which would be about right here. You can just about tell here that its x-intercepts are at negative 3 and positive 3, but you're not positive, so you go check those on the calculator. No, it's, two, it's not quite, it's 2.8, I'll have to work for it. So here's 1, 2, 3, 2.8 would be about right there. 1, 2, 3, 2.8 would be right about there. And then it does have a maximum, it does have a minimum. Did you find those two? Uh, negative point is the minimum, which would be the bottom. Okay. Close to the W's, I guess. Yeah. And the maximum is Yes. So there it shows you. It's negative 20.25. Oh, Just a little tiny bit off, but it was pretty close. So you're going to be at any of your final exam things on that schedule, right? Yes. Okay. We can come to order one. Right. Yes, okay. if you need to. Okay. So there's a good rough sketch. So your x-intercepts were negative 2.80, 2.80. 
Your y-intercept was at 0, negative 8. Your relative minimum is negative 1.87. negative 20.25 and then the other one is at positive 1.87 20.25 so and the relative maximum because these are both minimums none it doesn't have a maximum value because it continues to go on and up forever so if we put Infinity Yeah, because infinity is not actually a number. When you talk about a maximum, it has to be an actual value. Okay. okay? Now, I'll finish this up. Do you all have another class right now? Those of you that do can go ahead. I will finish this up, but I will do it in a separate recording, uh, and I'll do it tonight when I get home. Did you say, and you put out through the that you are doing a review session tomorrow afternoon? Yes, tomorrow afternoon about 12.30. Okay. okay. And uh, Yes, and I will send out the password for it. Uh, it's actually open as of in five minutes. Okay, and I'll, I'll send everybody the password in the line. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we're good for Tuesday. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're good for Thank you.